Hi guys, Paul and Tom's here. Hello. And here we are today, we're going to do an unboxing, a quick unboxing on a Foxtech product. And as you can see, what we have here is a Foxtech vest. Now I know Bruce has also got one. Uh, I'm assuming some of the other guys would have received them too. We also got some stickers. Uh, this is the Foxtech stickers, which we've put on our aircraft. So uh, they've sent us out one of these DVRs to actually review. Um, this should be quite interesting, won't it? Yes, because this is a monitor and a DVR. That's right. Well, it's a monitor and a DVR, you right. And it's also got a built-in um, 5.8 gigahertz uh, receiver in it. So that's going to be really handy. Where I see us using this is mainly for the quads more than anything else, but there are lots of other applications you can use them for. So we'll get stuck straight into the unboxing. Uh, by the way, thanks very much, Foxtech. Thank you. So this is what we get with the uh, Foxtech RC800. You've got the operation manual. Um, uh, appears to be English, it's good. So no dramas, I'm gonna have to go through and read through that. Uh, Chinese at the back. Uh, this is the monitor. Now I saw Bruce's unboxing of this, which was pretty cool. So it's probably worthwhile checking out his channel because he's actually gone into some detail as far as our power consumption goes on this. So it's probably going to be a worthwhile watch. Um, that's sort of shiny, but apparently if we take this guy off, as you can see, it's a nice matte finish. And I don't think you can see my reflection or anything else there. So that's a light that I'm using. So it's a, uh, Looks like a pretty decent monitor. So connections at the back, we've got antenna, ATT, I'm not sure what that's for, USB, obviously DC in, data out, we've got AV in and AV out, and SD card slot there. And that's probably bright enough for you to have a look at. So that's the SD card slot there. It gives you a good look. I assume these are, that's ventilation, these are probably speakers, I think. Who knows? And this is the front of it. So, you obviously get the monitor. We've got our um, cover, our little hood that goes around the actual monitor itself. Looks, looks as though it just Velcros on. So we'll give that a go and see how that goes. Uh, we have not sure what sort of cable this is. It's an audio cable and obviously it looks like a Futaba connector. So um, I'm not sure how well you can see that. We've got the power, uh, 5.8 gigahertz antenna. Um, I'm not sure what this is for, another audio connector. Let's look through the manual. USB uh, data cable. Um, one of these, obviously, audio, video in, etc and uh, one of these things. Now I assume this is to allow, there we go, to screw into, um, screw into a uh, tripod type mount. So it's like a quarter inch thread uh, and secure it to something, whatever it may be. So this is my 9XR and the way I see myself using this is I'm gonna probably have this monitor sitting up here like so. And once it's mounted up on the actual uh, radio, it'll probably be used mainly, I would say, for my uh, quadcopter. Um, I will also use it for the aircraft too, and I'll explain a little later on in, in future videos how I intend on using it. But yeah, so this is my intention at the moment. This sort of configuration works well because you can look up and look at the actual uh, quadcopter itself and also get a view of exactly what it is that it is looking at. So. Um, it allows you to sort of keep an eye on what's going on around the quadcopter itself, not only just the vision out of the FPV. So this is going to be really good for um, some cinematic shots and those, that type of thing. But um, we'll get this thing fired up and see how it goes. Okay, so what we've done is basically connect up to a small battery. It's only an 800 milliamp hour 3S. Hold the power button down and it switches on. It's in Chinese, so what we'll do is go into the menu, go down to your last option, press OK, change that back to English, and we should be good to go. Now the other thing to watch out for is this auto power off. You probably want that switched off. Uh, and we'll continue menu again. Um, 
go down and battery type you probably want to change it to ignore because I'm going to be using different types of batteries and I believe if you have a look at Bruce's video he actually goes through and explains how this thing goes into a um, battery warning way way too early and shuts down because it thinks there's not enough power and there is I'll just adjust the brightness you can probably see that a little bit better so uh, we'll get out of that so this is basically what it looks like um, the other interesting thing you'll note I'll, I'll make a note of is you need to make sure at the moment it's set to NTSC now the Immersion RC uh, video transmitter that I'm actually using on my quadcopter is the 600 milliwatt Immersion RC one. Now that one, I've actually tried it out already and uh, you just need to make sure you set it to the right format. That one outputs as NTSC. Now I had this originally set to PAL and the video was all messed up. So you're gonna have to adjust this according to whatever type of camera you're actually, you've actually got connected to your video transmitter so in this instance i'm going to leave that as ntsc um, functions that this thing has has got has got loop recording i'm not sure if i'm going to have loop recording on or off uh, or i may just go into manual record mode um, time and date stamp i don't think i'll be using that memory info i've got no sd card in there at the moment so i won't worry about that format allows you to format the actual card language i've already gone through that Time and date, this is where you can set the time and date for this device. As you can see, I've already done that. Um, default, you can reset it back to default. Beeps, if you want the beeps off. And there's no more beeps. I don't think that worries me particularly. Now this is the TV standard, so you need to make sure you set this to either PAL or NTSC, depending on the type of camera you actually have connected to your video transmitter if you don't have this right the video does look messed up on this and i'll actually do a follow-up video and show you exactly how this works um, and we can go down to auto power off i have that switched off because i don't want this thing to ever go off on me now the only downside with doing that is if you've got a battery connected you're going to probably drain the battery completely flat so just be wary of that if you're going to do that make sure you, you unplug your power source or have a voltage alarm or something like that on your actual uh, battery uh, battery type this is where you set your battery type now I've played around with 2s and 3s batteries and I think the voltage warning I have to, I'd have to agree with Bruce is set way too low um, even batteries that were probably 80% 90% charged it was um, complaining about the battery voltage being too low so I've got that switched off at the moment um, no. Uh, remote type, there's no remote control connected to it. LCD brightness. And that's low. And that's high. So um, this seems really, really good. Outdoors, obviously you're still gonna have dramas if there's direct sunlight on it. I, don't, I haven't seen any monitor that's capable of uh, handling direct sunlight. So just keep that in mind. I'll set that back to the level three and you've got full screen mode and you can change it from full screen mode on or off depending on what you want to do and that depends on the type of uh, uh, camera you've got connected if you've got a 4.3 it'll basically crop either side off i normally have mine on because i don't mind it stretched out at all um, and version type well that's the version software it's using i'm not sure if i can change it or how you would go about doing that so anyway this is a quick rundown on this uh, video monitor I think this is going to be really handy either as a secondary uh, recording device and monitor for people watching you while you're flying FPV or if you're going to be flying a quadcopter like I said in this sort of uh, configuration so um, I reckon that's going to work really well too so um, there's a couple of uses a couple of different ways you can actually use this it's going to be really up to you how, how you go about using this now I won't be using um, the stock antennas as you know i don't use the stock antennas on anything this will probably running be running with um i would imagine a skew planer antenna anyway i'm going to get this uh i'm going to make up some sort of adapter and attach it to my radio and hopefully in the next week or so we'll, we can actually test this out and see how it goes on the field um thanks for watching guys